Good morning everyone, welcome back to Piccadilly. Now I have to say, this arrival um, came from an email from Hattons, you can probably recognise the box, and it was a total surprise because I just didn't expect this to arrive at least until sort of October, November, if not even next year. So to have the email come through and this item is actually available right here, right now, I thought I've got to get on and get it right right now. So without any further ado, let's get it open. Now I suppose you're wondering what it might be, aren't you? Well, Ha <laughs> little trick for you, old hat and um, dap holes, a little trick there, putting the, uh, the guarantee at the beginning. There it is. And what a beautiful thing that is. First time I've seen it in the flesh. Now, you might say to me, but John, these don't run into Piccadilly. And yeah, you're absolutely right, they don't. But it will be, <laughs> um, because I've been wanting one of these right from the beginning. When, ha when um, Dapol released this last batch of four, you probably remember I bought the Great Western version, and I love it. And it was fitted with sound for me, and... Ever since I saw this one, I wanted this one too. Um, now, I've only bought this. I haven't bought any extra coaches yet. I will. Um, but you probably realise financial circumstances have changed and I have to be a bit careful. The coaches will always be available, whereas this will be snapped up and they'll only make so many of these. So I should be able to get the coaches for almost years to come. It won't take that long, but anyway. Let's have a look. Now, normally with the dapple item, you have to lift the casing out and take each item very gently. Let's have a look. Well, I have to say that's very crisply done. I mean, it's the same model as before. This one doesn't have the deflector shields on the top but does have the um, spotted headlights, windscreen wiper fitted. I think there were some comments about the Backman 90 that they didn't have windscreen wipers, although that's a gorgeous model, and if I modeled in double R, I'd definitely be having one of those, but N is my choice, and I hope that Backman do do an N gauge version. But look, you can see this is just so crisply, um, applied and I'll try and bring it a little bit closer to the camera see if we can just touch the screen to get it to focus the camera is on a tripod but it's not ever so stable I'd like to get another one I can't quite read what it says on the door there but I imagine it says driver or something like that but beautiful but I mean if you can and just touch the camera to make it focus. It's not having it, is it? No, I'll do it that way and bring it in a bit closer. No, but you probably can be able to read what it's most of what it says there. You've got the warning flash, I think. But yeah, what a gorgeous train. I know there was that Jamie from Dapol was telling me that they had a few issues getting the white striping right and getting the colours right. But yeah, really pleased with that. Lovely. This is the heavier one. So obviously that's the one with the motor. And just pop that back. Actually put that back in the box there. Oops. I don't want to break it and I will show you this one but I don't think there's going to be a lot of difference between this one and the other although having said that though there seems to be a gap there 
Is there a gap on the other one? Oh yes, there is, yeah. I was thinking of this gap here, but there is a gap in that bit as well. Don't remember seeing that on the on any of the other HSTs, to be honest. Perhaps it's a modification on this version. Oops, a, let's remove that. Put that one back in into the casing. Corridor connection first. Again, so nicely applied. The delivery that is 43312. And this one is considerably lighter, as you can appreciate. This is the dummy car. But yeah, so impressive. All right, and what about the coaches? Now, I know Dapple have done literally hundreds of these almost but clearly an hst version no buffers yeah couplings are working nicely metal tinted wheels or chemically adjusted wheels i should say whatever but yeah look at that i mean the fact that they've got this this white edge here just blurs out let me bring that in a bit closer whether that will focus even more. But the, the, the effect that they've got going on around there and the orange um, cantrail is it? But the number's ever so clear. Very nicely done. First class on there. And obviously all the details, the decals coming down the back. Beautiful. Very, very nicely done indeed. Okay, put that one back. It's been a little bit stiff going in. And the TGS, trailer guard second that is. You can tell because of the, the blocked in window here. When the HSTs first came out, back in the 1970s, early 80s, there was another window just there at the back of the HST where the guard would sit. And in the early days, they were complaining that it was so loud from the engine in there that they decided to um, convert the back half of the first coach. So the, drive, the guard had somewhere relatively quiet to sit. Still be a little bit noisy, I'd imagine. The HSTs... Gorgeous as they are, they can't have been quiet machines to be working on. But yeah, you, that is just beautiful. And I should look forward to getting the others. A little bike symbol just there. And guard on the door there, I can just about make that out. And all the little deck cars coming down the side there. Very, very nicely done. Colours look about right as well. So yes, beautiful. Actually, I didn't show you these couplings or extra details that come in the bags. This one, which is the standard, oh, if we can get it to focus a bit better than that. There we go. I think these are the magnetic couplings. They do have a tiny little spring on there. I don't know if you could be able to make that out. And there's an arm that comes down just like the KD couplers. You can probably just see it there. So I don't know whether these work with magnets in the track. So if, you, if you're if you more familiar with these, then maybe you'd like to drop a comment below. But I've had no experience with these whatsoever. And the other bag does come with the standard um, Buckeyes, that Dapol are calling them. And again, just the NEM pocket for N-Gage. They just push in. Uh, I tend not to use those, to be honest with you. Um, I stick with the standard Rapidos um, purely because they're not ever so tall and your track has to be perfectly flat. If you've got any undulations, what tends to happen is they tend to move like that. And as they move, obviously they can uncouple. So I tend not to bother. And on the back, uh, you've got the um, disc brakes 
which can be fitted to all the wheels. Um, again, I don't bother purely because it's N-gauge and if you can see those on a train when it's moving around, then good luck to you. But life's too short, to be honest with you. There's eight per wheel, eight per carriage, I mean. And uh, when you've got a train of seven coaches, that's just one train. I mean, I'd dread to think how many of these things I've got on the layout. There must be, I don't know, 30 or 40 Mark III coaches on the layout. I don't know, no idea. But um, I do have a fair few of them, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. But anyway, that's those. Now, on the instructions, I'm not gonna we, I'm not going to go into this for great length of time by any means, but it does talk about oiling. There's four exposed gears there. And so it, you must oil these um, before you use them in these particular places, otherwise that can void the warranty. Um, it doesn't say anything about running in, but I think it would be a very good idea to do just like I do with the Farris stuff to give it a quick run in and just make sure Oops, we're zooming out of focus a bit there there we go um yeah i'm going to give it a bit of a run in on the test track on dc with my little batman controller um, for about half an hour each direction once that's done i'll come back to you and show you how to fit a dcc decoder and it is very easy like i said before all right speak soon all right thought i'd show it you running in on the test track I have cleaned the track with isopropyl alcohol and as you can see there it's running absolutely beautifully and for a brand new model so it should. You see there just about make out it has one headlight. Now if I'm honest with you that's the only thing I really don't like about these. Um, the fact the HST in this configuration with the new spotted headlights does have three lights that come on and the high intensity light swaps from left to right depending on whether it's day or night time mode but sadly on the N-Gage model we just get that one light and that's your lot so I have to be honest that's the only thing I don't like and I know it's possible because DAPOL have done it with the 68 so but otherwise I'm really quite pleased at the moment slow it down just to take it back the other way I'm just using one of these um, little cheap Dapol um, Backman um, DC controllers see no issues with that whatsoever running beautifully Okay, I will get that completed in running in and I will come back to you soon with the decoder fitting. Okay, it's running for half an hour in both directions. Now it's time to fit the decoder. Now, what you need to do, it's very easy in getting an N-gauge body off. You slip your fingernails underneath the body and gently prise outward and upward at the same time. Now, be very careful with DAPOL models because they tend to have wires going from the chassis through to the body. And this, I'm sure, will be no exception. And gently lifting it off. In fact, that's probably all I need to do because there's the decoder or the decoder socket just there. Let me just focus that a bit better for you. About there. Actually, I'm not sure that is there. Right, so there's the decoder uh, socket just there. So that gently comes out. Six pin, as you can see. And I'm gently prising out the blanking plate. Now, Dapol very kindly put top on there, if I turn it the other way, you might even be able to read it. How about that? Top. And they also put the numbers so you know which pin belongs where. So this case, pin number one is on this side, on the right hand side, as we look at it. So the decoder 
that I'm putting in is one of these. I can't remember, I think it's Digitrains, I'm not sure. Now, there's a little silver blob just there. So that tells me, let me just double check. Oh, actually, is that a number one there? Well, we'll soon find out when we put it on the track, won't we? It won't work. Well, I think that's the number one, just that side. So I'm going to put it in that way around. Like that. And that's it. So put the body back on. Being careful, there's a clip at the back. So I'm making sure it's as far forward as it will go. And that should clip in. There we go. Making sure that the body's on. Now, I've already done the dummy car. And I was finding, for the first time, having said that, I've got three of these, remember, three HSTs. The dummy car on this particular occasion was uh, binding a little bit on the bogus. So I had to sort of take the pop the bogies out and reposition them. And it was all right after that. Right, anyway, I'm going to pop this back on the track so you can see, just to check whether it still runs on DC. Right, so just want to do a quick check. I'm still using the Backman DC controller. And just to double check that everything's running before I connect the select. Yeah, that seems to be all right. I'm presuming it's just hesitating a little bit because that's the way the decoder's set up. Okay, right, I'm gonna switch this over now for the select, which is what I use on the test track. And um, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, right, I've now, like I said, I've put the decoders in, as you know. Now, what I need to do is program it. Um, it's on address number three at the moment. And I'm going to put this to 50. OK, so I'm going to press um, the select button, which brings up lane address, LA. Type in 50 and press select. Like that. And just check it's working. Lovely. Right, I also want to program the acceleration and the deacceleration. So acceleration, I press this button and this button together. And I get acceleration, um, something I like CV or whatever that might stand for, I'm not sure. Now, I like to put an HST at 35 and press select. So you, I don't know whether you can make out the lights flashing there. The light's still flashing on, on the controller, it was. And the deacceleration, I'm pressing this directional button and again, function. And I get DE. Now, I always put all my trains to 15. And the reason for that is because I don't like them slowing down too slowly because it takes away control. So I move that across slightly. All right, now just a quick test. All right, if I show you the lights, at one end, I've got a white light. At the other end, I've got a white light. Now, my select seems to do that quite a lot. Um, the only way I'm gonna correct that is to put it on the the main track with the Z21 and just reprogram it. It tends to sort that problem out. Um, if it doesn't, what you do is you put it on together on your programming track anyway. And then with the dummy car and the main car. And then once you've done that, you then take the dummy car off and reprogram Z uh, CV29 to the next odd number so you read what what it is and then add one and then that will just take it will reorientate the power car 
to the opposite orientation to the dummy car, if that makes any sense. So you'd end up with red on one end and white on the other and vice versa. OK, All right. Here we are on the Z21. HST is on the programming track. But I thought I'd just show you what we have to do to put in a new loco. So on the home screen on the newer app, you put in the top, put in vehicles and then go to this little plus sign down the bottom here, add. Now we're adding a loco, so press loco. Okay, I'll just make sure that it's all in a little bit of focus for you. It's a bit sharper. Sorry about the light above. There's not a lot I can do about that. I'll try and hold it there. Now I've got a blank screen here, so I'm now going to go into that one. Where is the address? And I'm going to type in 50. Okay. Now I get that little pop up come up and it wants you to do it right there and then. So because it's on the programming track, I'm just going to click programming track. Address successful. Okay. As you can see just there. Okay. Now new loco, it wants me to give it a name. So I'm going to call it Virgin space HST. Oops, if I can spell Virgin correctly, of course. Okay, actually, I'll click on that to get the capital letters. Right, I'm not going to bother with the category. It's active. I want it in miles per hour. And now it asks me for a photograph. So when I click on that, just there, it then gives me some options, an example photo, which will just be the um, German ones from Roco and Fleischmann. So that's not really helpful to me in this case. Photos library or the camera. So I've already taken the picture of the HST I want from the internet. So I'm just going to download that, do off screen if you don't mind. Right, there's the picture I've chosen. Okay, um, maximum speed, I'm going to change that to 125, just there. And it asks me DC or Motorola, obviously DCC, 128 speed steps. And then a lot of this other information I don't need you bother with. But what I do need to do is now go to functions because otherwise the lights won't work. So I need to press symbol or this space here. If you notice, it's a slightly lighter gray square and then go to symbol. And I'm just going to choose the first one, which are the lights. OK, now, hopefully. If I do that. You should. If I zoom you in a little bit more. If I pull that back slightly. Zoom you in slightly more. You might just be able to make out they go on and off. Okay. Now programming it will have solved the problem of the uh, lights at either end. So I'm not worried about that at all. Okay. Next stage is actually the coaches. Okay. See you in a minute. All right. So there we are. Finally, she's back on the layout and up and running now. I did have one or two issues with the decoder I put in, that Digitrax one. It was causing the train to sort of jerk along the track a little bit, but I can't find the CV to alter it. So the easiest thing to do was to nick a decoder from another locomotive and I'll replace that at some other point. Okay, now um, all the moment you've been waiting for. Now, please do bear in mind, I've only got two of this um, East Coast coaches. So Virgin have been very kind to us and lent us some West Coast stock. And it'll run with those from this in this instance. Okay. And I'll set the 60 off at the same time as well.
that 60 going a little bit faster. But I'm really pleased with that. I know it doesn't fit the layout, but hey, it's my layout. <laughs> and the way sometimes the pendolinos run anyway, I um I sometimes think, well, I should just replace them with this anyway. Just get a couple of these and just have that running that's used to. I know it won't be as it is, but it could be in my world, couldn't it? All right, anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. I certainly have enjoyed opening it and uh, seeing, seeing one of these new um, West Coast, or East Coast HSTs finally coming out. I know Double O have had them for quite a while and um, we've, we've had to wait quite a while. So anyway, like I said, hope you've enjoyed that. Please like, subscribe and comment and I'll catch you soon with a layer update. Bye.